Welcome into the lounge presented by DraftKings. We have the pleasure of sitting down with Raven Safety Marcus Williams. Thanks for joining us, Marcus. Yes, sir, thanks for having me. Uh, one thing I always like to to open with is, you know, we try to look at something funny. You know, we try to, you know, <laughs> keep it light off the top, right? So I go right. to people's social media accounts often to find this, the players, right? And so I went to yours just before we started this, and I saw your latest tweet was. Seeing my mom work out is so motivating to me, which I thought was kind of interesting. So your mom gets after it in the in the weight room a little bit. Yeah, she just barely started to work out, and it's it's very inspiring to see her, you know, go through and push through and do something she's uncomfortable with and, uh -huh. and try to get comfortable with it. So it's, it's very amazing to see her go out there and, and put in the time and the effort to get it done. So So you watch her, like, you know, 10 reps or whatever you're like all right now i gotta I, beat i gotta top that or nah, how's this going nah, it's, it's, it's all about her just doing it you know taking that step you know a lot of people don't just take the initial step to get into working out and and she's taking yeah. that step to worry about her health and to get back right in the shape so it, it's good and inspiring and motivating well you're looking at two guys who don't work out at all so speak for, <laughs> speak for yourself speak for yourself also. over there <laughs> no so uh something else that i saw speaking of working out and a, a social media post what's the deal with the treadmill in your hotel room man i don't know so you got to, I got to, to the hotel new england and there was england. a treadmill in your hotel room it's a treadmill in the hotel and i'm like what is going on <laughs> i'm like i go downstairs i'm like does everybody have a treadmill in the room so everybody comes in the room why do you have a <laughs> a treadmill in your room i'm just like man i don't even know i was wondering like, like, i was like, trying to send me a message well, hey, what's i, I was on? wondering it's like is this a special request like are you making demands for your hotel rooms i was like i mean no, marcus big me. time guy nah i'm not i'm not <laughs> running on a treadmill and, and before the game no, not at all but it was it was definitely a different experience for me you know smelling the treadmill in the room it was like okay somebody must have been using did, this. did you use it at all no <laughs> was that the I one that Lamar popped it. down on? I, I tried to unplug it. <laughs> uh, he probably had one in his room too. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So, so something else that I is kind of interesting. Obviously, you're, we're going to talk about football and your your hot start to the season. So you get the you get two picks uh, against Miami. The thing that I found interesting is I think you were the first player that I've ever heard say I was out. Marlon, you make the interception along the sidelines. Marlon was mic'd, and he's like celebrating, and you tell him, "I was out." The I've one never on the heard sidelines. The yeah. toe tapper. Yeah, right. every player I feel like always says like, <laughs> even if it's clear that they don't catch it or that they're out of bounds, every player is always like, "Oh, I got that. I'm in." But you were like, "I was out," but you were actually in. First of all, I'm surprised that Marlon didn't tell us he was mic'd up. Oh, uh -oh. <laughs> so this is the first time I'm hearing Marlon was mic'd up. Uh oh. One. <laughs> That's a penalty. Yeah, That's a penalty. Definitely. But two, I man, I just I just caught it. I'm like, I'm out of bounds. I'm definitely out of bounds. I didn't I didn't know if I I, I felt myself drag my foot, but I was like, I'm out of bounds. Like the, the ref was like, so I was like, okay, I must have been out. <laughs> Coming to find out I was in battles, I'm happy. You know, I get two picks. So. Yeah. So three three interceptions in the first three games. Your career high, you've done it twice, is four picks. So, I mean, I'm no mathematician, but you're on pace for a career season here, right? You're leading the NFL. Just just what is this hot start like for you? I mean, I just, I'm just doing my job. I'm not. I'm not doing anything out of the ordinary. Just doing my job, and when the ball comes, go make plays, you know. Um Right now, I just I just trying to do everything I can to help the team out. So it's not really about me, but when those plays come, I just want to make them and get the ball back for our offense. But I mean, why? I mean, is the ball just finding you? Like you know, our interceptions. You know, there's a, a luck factor to them to a degree, no. right? No, no. Okay. <laughs> not these, not yeah, these ones that you're yeah, making. No, it's never, it's never luck when you get the ball in your hands. And those are never luck. Those are, those are. All, I mean, you put time in catching the ball. Right. You put time in tracking the ball and looking for it. And when it comes to you, it's, it's never luck. It's like, okay, I, it, it was supposed to come. Right. All right. I'll say this: bad luck on the one that that you dropped. It's not bad luck. <laughs> there's Over no, two. There's no luck. There's no luck. Just remember. If I the dropped luck. it, I dropped it. But there's no luck. There's no bad luck. Like I'm not mad. Like I'm not mad. Okay, I dropped it. Whatever. Right, I'm gonna right. get another one. Right. Right. So what is it that that you attribute third time's, to? Third time's a charm third here. Third time's a charm. Here, let's go. <laughs> what do you What do you attribute it to then? Like the three picks. Like you know, is it the film study that's just really paying off? What is it that you can? I mean, I, to? I practice taking the ball away. I practice. I, I watch the film to know where a guy's gonna be to know that I could make a play yeah. and I, I practice it on the practice field I go out there and I make plays on the practice field and it transitions to the game so all the preparation that I put in really 
helps me to get to where I'm at on the field. And in the, when the times the games and lights are on, I want to go make those plays. So it's never luck. It's it's really all about that preparation that you put in to make the plays. So over the years, there's been a handful of guys that have come here from different teams at the safety position, Tony Jefferson and Eric Weddle. And, and guys talk about like that transition period and – kind of building familiarity and getting comfortable in a defense and how it can take some time. It hasn't taken you long, at least from the eye test. I mean, you're, you're making these plays that we're talking about. How quickly did you feel like at home in this defense? Do you still feel like it's uh, like you're still building that familiarity? Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I think it's always a learning uh, a learning curve no matter where you're at. You got to you gotta go and you got to learn pretty fast. So, you know, for me, even coming as a rookie and coming into year six, is still you still got to learn. You still got to learn fast. And it's always like, okay, the faster you learn, the faster you can get ahead. So for me, once I got the playbook, I was in it. I was learning as fast as I could, and I'm, I'm still learning. I mean, I don't, I don't know everything right now, but eventually – by the time I'm done playing, maybe I'll know everything. <laughs> maybe when I'm a coach or something. But right now, I just I just learn as much as I can, as fast as I can. And then, I mean, it's not too much of a difference from as far as, like, plays go from one team to the next. I feel like everybody kind of has similar styles of plays. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'll, I'll be able to pick it up and just uh, figure out the new terminology from one team to another. And, I mean, once I figured that out, it was, it was good for them from there. Well, speaking of Eric Weddle, you're a Utah guy, and I know you and Eric are pretty tight. Was there, you know, I know he played a role in you coming here. You talked to him before you you decided to join here. Uh, did he play? Did you have any more conversations about the Ravens defense? And hey, you know, I'm kind of seeing this. Can you help me? You know, anything like that? Well, he just he just said, "I, I love playing here." Um, so far, I mean. After, you know, game one, he's like, I love the way you're playing and things like that. Yeah. But right now, he just like, you're going to let me focus and lock in. Because, yeah. you know, a lot of a lot of times people are, you know, do this, do this. But, he you know, it's, it's sometimes it's good to just, you know, be sit back and watch. And, and then if they see something, like if he sees something, I'm sure he'll hit me up. Hey, you need to do this. But mm -hmm. right now, you know, he just I'm just doing my thing. And, you know, I got guys. I got my trainers back home, making sure that I'm doing the same same that that I need to be doing, so I can go out there and make those plays. Are you two really tight? I mean, both California guys who went to Utah. You know, you share a lot in common. Are, are yeah, you guys we. I mean, tight? We, we. I mean, we don't just hang out and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, he has his family and stuff. But no, he. If, if there's anything going on, he'll definitely hit me up, and I can hit him up whenever. Now, you're both basketballers too. I mean, I hear there's some videos of you just yakking on some guys back in high school. Is this is this true? Who's who's the baller between the two of you, the better baller? I mean, I feel like I'm a better baller than anybody. <laughs> so I don't I don't know. I mean, you would have to see us both on the corner at the same time to know that. Okay. This All is right. always like one of the hottest debated topics in the locker room is right. who's the best basketball player Where on the Prochet team. Prochet likes to brag about his skill. I know there. I know this. I know there's. I know there's the hoop in there. There is a hoop in the locker room. Do you yeah. get in on the the games You've been on that? We're doing the real hoop and shoot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, the hoop in the locker room is like falling apart. Basically. No, we don't do. We don't use. Okay, don't you use like the, you do the real I deal. Use the real hoop and okay. in the back of the weight room. Okay, all right. <laughs> I'm really shooting. <laughs> so um, I, I'm curious, like going back to when you signed here this off season, what was that like when you like when you get that kind of a deal? Like that is a life changing amount of money a life-changing contract like your life changes in terms of the city the, the team all of that like what was the emotion when you put the pen to paper and you signed that contract man it was it was an amazing amazing feeling just just being able to you know change my family's legacy um I, it didn't really hit me until after i left here until after i got on the plane back to california and I was just thinking about, dang, I really, I really did something that I said I was gonna do. So it's definitely an amazing feeling. I was very emotional that day. Um, I mean, you probably, you nobody would ever know, but that that's just how I was on the on the plane back. Like literally before we touched down, I was just mm -hmm. like, dang, it's all hitting me, all rush, <laughs> all rush to my head, and it, it's just, it's just, it's just great. Um, you know, it's a, it's it's a responsibility that I, I definitely take a. I, I don't take for granted. I, I I love being in this position, and I love being able to you know change my family's legacy and and be that person. So it, it's definitely an honor for sure. I know you had a bunch of family here with you. I remember when you know when you were here, you had you know, a large group of a large group of family members here. Was that part of the reason it was kind of an emotional flight home? Like you're just surrounded by the people who you're talking about right now. Right, definitely. I mean, having my whole family here, my brothers, my mom and dad, is is definitely a a great feeling to know they always have my back no matter what's going on. So having them here with me was definitely was definitely a great thing, and being able to 
they can all fly here with me and fly back with me definitely showed that support system. And, and you retired your folks, right? From oh, what yeah, I understand, they're, they're retired now, so they've been they've been out here in Baltimore, uh, living out here for the last couple of months, and been you know just hanging out. Oh, that's cool. Going, going to D.C. and Virginia and all that stuff, so they're having a good time. Do you guys get really excited for a matchup like this where they have that kind of passing offense? You know, Josh Allen, Diggs, you know, all those guys. Like, do you look at this and be like? Hell yeah! This is kind of the game that I want to sign up for. You know, I'm excited for every game. Yeah, yeah. Every every game is another opportunity to make plays. Every every game is another opportunity to put your resume out there. So every time we go out there, we're excited because it's the next game. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and the last one for me, you guys get the win, uh, and the defense really kind of sealed it with the turnovers uh, late in that game. What did it mean to you guys as a defense to be able to have that type of performance, where like? You know, you're you're seeing your teammates get turnovers. You're having like the game kind of come down to you, and your and your defense is making the plays in that situation. It's great. I mean, when you when you're on the field, it's just more TV time for us. So <laughs> we we like we like putting putting it on us, you know. But we we also know our offense is always going to be be there to have our backs, just like we're there to have their backs. So uh, us making plays is just something that we do, something that we need to do every 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 day, every game, and you know that that will help us win games. So you're a very locked in guy. That's kind of the impression I get from you. You are focused, man. And I want to know if you have an off day, you got an off day, you're not going to visit your family, not hanging out with your parents, nothing, your siblings, it's just you. What are you doing for fun? For me, for fun, I'll probably be playing video games or something. Okay. I'm All at right. The house playing video That's games. how you unplug, huh? Yeah. yeah. I don't, if I have an off day from, from, from work, I'm usually just at the house trying to rest, recover, and get ready for the next day. There's really no, <laughs> there's really no real off days. I come in here, I still work out on the off day, still get the lift in, and then go home and try to relax, watch TV or right, play the video. What's game. your game? Uh, Call of Duty. Call of Duty guy. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's a good game. That's a yeah, good I, game. Play it. I play. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, Marcus, thanks, man. Yes, sir. Really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. All right, so good stuff from Marcus. Uh, really enjoyed the conversation with him. Also, we want to give a shout-out to our friends at DraftKings because as listeners and viewers know, the sports landscape is always changing, and this week is no different. DraftKings is the leader in daily, daily fantasy sports and still has daily fantasy contests running for those who are looking to have some skin in the game. So this is simple. Every player has a salary associated with drafting them. You assemble a lineup of players. You try to stay under that salary cap, and then you sit back and you watch your points pile up. So now you know how to play. Download the DraftKings app today. Sign up using the code FLOCK. New users will get a free entry with their first deposit. Again, that code is FLOCK, and you can sign up today at DraftKings. So, uh, thanks to Marcus. I mean, look, the early returns on him are, are sure impressive. Like, yes. when I watch him on the field, first, you see the interceptions, and he has range on the back end that the Ravens have not had in a long time. Yeah. And the ball skills that he has at that position are something that the Ravens haven't had since Ed Reed. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, the Ravens have, well, I mean, yes, at safety. At safety. At right. safety. Marcus, Marcus Peters. Peters has got some good, nice ball skills, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, But, yeah, at safety, I definitely agree. And and it's not just that, really. I mean, he's been all over the field making tackles. I mean, yeah. He had, like, 12 tackles, I think, against the Jets. Yeah, he did. I mean, the dude's just been all over the field. And then when you look at some of the Ravens, you know, Issues in pass defense. And Marcus. Yeah, yeah, it hasn't been his way. <laughs> it hasn't yeah. been his way. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I mean, the, the Ravens made a big investment in him, and that investment has sure paid off and, early this season. And the Ravens have had some, you know, good free agent safeties that have come in here. I mentioned Tony and Eric, you know, but like Marcus's ability to just be that true, like free, rangy, free safety with great ball yeah. skills, like that is what sets him apart. Um, and just makes him such a dangerous player. Some I think he's going to pass the number. I think he's going to pass four interceptions this year. I by the way. definitely think he will. Uh, some of the other guys maybe got some lucky interceptions, but not Marcus. There was yeah, he didn't like you saying that. He, luck involved. He, you know, you say Marcus, so you get picks. All your picks are luck, right? <laughs> that's not what I'm I think saying. that's what you said. All your picks are luck. This is classic. You, you love to twist my questions <laughs> and stuff. So Marcus, tell me about your lucky interceptions. <laughs> lucky. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying turnovers can have, you know, a deflected pass, yeah, yeah. but then you have to be in the right spot well, to get that deflected pass. So here's so I the thing. That. I actually, turnovers can be really fluky. Like, statistically, mm-hmm. you look at that and, and that can be the case. 
but the plays that he's making are no, no, fluky. none of his this year. Like absolutely, like, I mean, you could say like the Jets when the guy fell down, the wide receiver mm-hmm. tripped, and he got kind of an overthrow. But like, but to his point, like catching that overthrow is not easy. A has to elevate, and make a tough catch over his head on a Joe Flacco bullet. Yeah, right. And like being in that position to be be in the right spot for an overthrow to make that play happen and breaking on that ball, that also takes film study and athleticism that yeah. we don't understand. Yeah. Um, and so, like, yeah. So there, there's no luck involved is the, my yeah. final point. <laughs> well, I mean, he's going to be tested this week. Uh, yeah. The Buffalo Bills are coming to town, and, you know, you asked him about that, and he made the point that it's just another game. Yep. Um, and that's, you know, that's fair, but this is going to be – this is a high-powered offense. And I know the Bills just lost to Miami last week, but, man, the Bills' offense is high-powered. Stephon Diggs – has been maybe the best receiver in football. Well, he leads the rec- in the, the NFL in receiving yards. Yeah, so, so I mean, Tyreek yeah. Hill's been pretty darn good too, but right. uh, Stephon Diggs Jaylen has Waddle. been among the best receivers in football. Yes, um, and for years now. Y- yeah, and, and this year he's <laughs> yeah. even off to a hotter start than than past yeah. years. Um, so that's going to be a real challenge. Um, and Josh Allen, him and Lamar Jackson, you know, if you're handing out the MVP award after three weeks, uh, it's probably going to go to one of those two guys. Yep, and this there's going to be a lot on the secondary. They've given up a lot of pass yards this year. Mm-hmm. Um, as you said, not at Mar- not Marcus's fault, uh, mm-hmm. but they've given up a lot of pass yards, and so that it could ultimately certainly be what decides this game. Yeah, I mean the Ravens are ranked 32nd in the league in pass defense right now, and certainly you know when Tua puts up whatever it was 469 yeah. or whatever it was, you, you know, have one bad game in a three game span. It's really skewed. It's going to take some time to get yeah. that number down a little bit, yeah. right? And we're early in the year. Um, but, you know, they also had Mac Jones through for a career high. You know, I thought the the pass coverage was definitely better against the Patriots than it was against the Dolphins. There weren't the the breakdowns, just mm-hmm. the um, blown coverages. And so that's certainly an improvement. You know, I think what we're seeing to some degree early on is the Ravens signed Kyle Fuller for a reason, right? To be their number three veteran cornerback so that, you know, some of these young guys who they really like a lot, you know, Jalen Armour Davis, a Pepe Williams, you know, a Brandon Stevens in his second year who played safety last year as a, a rookie and now is going back to corner. He was a college running back. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so those three guys can really get their feet wet and kind of mature and grow in this defense, right? Like, I don't think that the Ravens ideally wanted to throw these rookies into such bigger roles early on in their first season. Yeah, well, the, the other piece obviously is the is the first round pick you know Kyle Hamilton who you know sure. he had the he struggled against Miami but I thought I thought Marcus had some good insight you know on that um and talking about like the, his message to, to Kyle mm-hmm. and like one play is not going to define your career one game is not going to define your career yep and so I think that like that type of veteran leadership and that was kind of like a, a theme that I heard from some of the vet vets on this defense Calais talked about that. Marlon Humphrey talked about that. Marcus talked about that. And, like, they got a lot of confidence, you know, in Kyle Hamilton um, and his ability to bounce back. And, and I think that goes for, you know, all these rookies who are getting some significant snaps. So, yeah, um, yeah I think I – mean, Against the Bills, I think one thing to keep in mind here is, like, don't – I don't think you should expect the secondary to, you know, shut them down, you know, hold the Bills to 200 yards. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, well, you know what, like, Mike – Like, I think the secondary can still have a good day, yeah. right, and, like – they're going to give up some plays, right? Of course. That, that, like Marcus said, that's what happens in the NFL, right? Now the Ravens want to give up fewer of them. Um, but, like, I think over the long term, this pass defense is going to settle in and get better, and these young players are going to get better, and, and they're going to work out some of these kinks with balloon coverages and whatnot, and they'll settle into, you know, whatever, somewhere around the middle or, or keep raising, rising up the rankings. Yeah, well— But, like, this week, don't sit there and expect, you know, whatever— yeah, Josh, Josh Allen performance. Josh Allen throw for 150 yards. Exactly. Yeah. I think. Uh, well, if it if if the rain as predicted ends up being as bad as it is. Um, and oh, is there rain in the forecast? Well, the hurricane is making its way up, um, and so the and the forecast is that it potentially could just be a downpour the entire game. So if that's the case, maybe that will hurt oh, uh, the gosh. rain. Who knows if that happens? You know, it's still you know still have time before Sunday. Can but, there be a good weather game against the Bills? Can we just get one? I mean, the the playoff game with the howling wind that yeah. just completely changed both teams' offenses? Yeah, that's true. I mean, geez, Louise. So, um, it, yeah, I mean, that, that that is interesting. The other thing I will say, too, is like if the defense – Look, you don't want to give up any yards. You don't, you want to give up zero yards. That's the that's the idea, but that's not going to happen. But if you are giving up yards, 
and you're getting turnovers, then that right. offsets those yards. Absolutely. And that's what happened against the Patriots. The Ravens gave up a good number of yards, but they got a bunch of turnovers. Exactly. They got turnovers they got turnovers against the Dolphins, but they gave up too many yards, too right. many points to that one. Right. But right. if you, And if that's by design. I mean, that was the Ravens' investments. They yeah. invested in a guy like Marcus Williams, right, for that reason. Up the turnovers. Get turnovers. Right? Kyle Hamilton, uh, you know, and gets the forced fumble. Yep. And then you, you get a guy like Marcus Peters back on the field. That's huge. So that was... By design, right? Yeah. Uh, certainly, the Ravens didn't want to design giving up as many passing yards as they have, but you know that was intentional, and I think that's something that's here to stay. Is is my it's point. not luck, as Marcus tells it's you? Not luck. It's by design. Exactly. That's the theme of this podcast episode. <laughs> <laughs> What's well, luck and not? Yes, and interceptions are not luck. Um, <laughs> all right, so I want to read this email. We we always encourage you to send us emails at the lounge at ravens.nfl. Dot net. What we're going to do, is just as a side note here, we've got this helmet, this Ravens helmet here, yep. and we're having the players who do the lounge sign the helmet, okay? And yeah. we are going to give the helmet away to somebody at the end of the season who has emailed in. So we're, we're keeping all these emails, all right? We're going to put them in some sort of lottery or something like that. Yep. And somebody who emails us, emails us over the course of the year will take home this football that has all these signatures the, on it. So uh, you can email us at the lounge at ravens.nfl.net. This email comes to us from Pakistan, okay? Uh, this is an early front runner. Hey, well, you, yes. But we're it's gonna, all randomized. It's random. <laughs> yeah, you're over here picking out your favorites. Um, <laughs> I am Samir Paracha from Pakistan. I started watching the NFL a couple seasons ago, and the Ravens have been my team ever since. The reason that I chose the Ravens was for a brief period of time, back in 2008 through 2010. Him and his family lived in Baltimore, and then they moved back to Pakistan. And, but he only started watching the NFL uh, recently. Okay. So the reason for this email is I want to let you guys know that he appreciates what you're doing, and the Ravens have been a big part of his life since he started watching the NFL. And the sport in general has been a lifesaver for me. Nice. Which is just really cool. So he's been listening to what we do, reading what we do, um, but he says that he is a small part of the Ravens' flock. Now, he does say that the NFL is not existent in Pakistan. He said, I'm probably the only guy who watches this sport. The time zone difference is insane. I have to wake up all night long for the games, and the primetime games are usually when I'm in class, but he still somehow manages not to miss any of the action. Wow. So that's... uh, That's awesome. Yeah, so... There's not a question here, uh, but I just want to go ahead and read the email because I mean, he sounds like a candidate for the International Fantasy Football League that he you're does. Not a part I mean, of, that you have rejected. <laughs> I, I, this is the first email that we've received from a listener in Pakistan. It's awesome, which is awesome. So um, we just want to give a shout out to Samir. It's it's cool to. I mean, that is one of the things that I do love about the podcast is that we've been able to connect with listeners uh, from literally all over the world. Yeah, um, and that has been a really fun. You you kind of see just the. Uh, the reach of the NFL and the Ravens um, through emails like that. So, Samir, thanks for listening. Yeah. Uh, thanks for your support. So, um, what other thoughts do you have about the game this weekend? I mean, what do you think? You know, I think the easy way to look at it is, all right, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, two front runner MVP candidates. It's going to mm-hmm. be a shootout. But I feel like when that's like the storyline going in, it never turns out to be that. I don't know. What do you well, think? If there's a hurricane, if there's a hurricane, the that game. probably won't be the case. <laughs> um, well. Uh, I think I think that it's going to be a very interesting game to see. You know, can the Ravens' running game get going a little bit? You know, we saw flashes of that uh, this past week with Justice Hill going. J.K. Dobbins is going to be in a second game. You know, can they kind of keep the Bills' defense, which is very good off balance? A big part of it is, you know, for the Bills is how healthy is their defense, right? Yeah. I mean. They are really banged yep. up. Uh, had neither of their starting safeties, one of which is on IR now, uh, Micah Hyde. So, you know. How healthy are they defensively? Their defensive line was really banged up. If it continues to be that way, can the Ravens get a little success on the ground, especially if it's raining? That will be important. Um, And then, obviously, Lamar Jackson. I mean, he's just been so hot. How long can he keep this pace up? You know, and I'm sure Lamar is very motivated to have a big game. You know, the playoff game here a couple years ago up in Buffalo and got knocked out of the game, you know, and didn't wasn't able to finish that one. I think he wants to beat the Bills. Yeah. You know, and so, um, yeah, it's just these two teams, really, if you're looking at it, I mean, two of the AFC favorites, absolutely, the Chiefs in that mix, too. But this is a potential playoff AFC championship preview. You know, Ooh, the early season. I mean, it is the week four prediction. No, yeah. look, look, both I these- said possible. I said <laughs> possible. Why not? Yeah. No, it, it could be both these teams. Look, there's no doubt that both these teams have hopes of being a Super Bowl team. So, yeah, um, it, it certainly could be that. You know, I think 
I, I will be curious to see if the Ravens do have a little more success, you know, running the football. If, if what we saw from Sunday is kind of the start of something. Mm-hmm. Also, as J.K. Dobbins just continues to get more comfortable, like, you know, he's going to start to feel more and more like himself, I think. Yep. Um, and we're going to get to see doses of that. And, and Justice Hill, like, maybe he t- seizes this opportunity that, right. he, that he has. Um, maybe I, it's a Rashad Bateman game. I also I, think it could be a Rashad but, Bateman so all game. That, all that all that said, you know, I talk about the running game. The weather is a is the great unknown here, but like just for a second, let's say it's going to be decent weather. I kind of feel like this is the Lamar in his arm game. I, I don't know that it's the running game because the as you mentioned, the Bills are banged up in the secondary. Right, Tre'Davious White, their star corner, still not back exactly. on the field. So like. This could be a game where they really lean on the passing game. Bateman, Duver- Bateman tops digs in du- receiving yards. Duver- Duvernay down the field, making some tough catches. Yeah. Uh, Mark Andrews continuing to do what he does. Mark Andrews, Mandrewsing. Yes. yes. So, like, I-, I think that this could be, of course, if it's a monsoon, that changes everything. But <clears throat> I think that this could be a game that you, you really lean on Lamar and his arm. And I do think, just as a side note, like the weather factor, I do think that kind of is an interesting wrinkle in your preparation during the week. Because if you go into the game plan, you're saying, you know what, we're going to air it out. This is going to be an air it out game. And all of a sudden, it's Sunday morning, and you're looking out the window, and you know there's an inch of rain on the ground, and it's continuing to monsoon the entire game. Right. Well, then you gotta you got to adjust. So I think that that's kind of a, a subplot that's interesting for this week. Lamar, though, is a good... I, I would say, like, rain, you know, he's played well in rainy conditions. Like I feel like in 19, every kinda, single game at home was a right, terrible, exactly. terrible rain game. Lamar might be a mutter. He might be a, <laughs> <laughs> he, he, Bad weather, whatever. Yeah. Still good, yeah. you know? Um, I, I think one interesting thing to talk about, and, you know, there will be plenty of Lamar and Josh Allen chatter over this, this week, um, but I think one thing that really stands out to me about these two guys is – how they have just improved over their careers, right? Like mm-hmm. in the 2018 draft, these were the two quote unquote raw guys, yeah. according to the analysts and the experts, right? Josh Allen with this huge arm, but couldn't dial it in, you know, uh, accuracy issues from college and had a low completion rate in college, you know, and there are big time questions about whether he could be accurate enough in the NFL. Obviously, with Lamar, big time questions coming out of the draft about whether his style of play could transfer to the NFL, and both guys have proven everybody wrong yeah. and are now at the top of the of the mountain, really, when it comes to quarterback play. And I think that that's just really cool to see, you know, like a testament to two guys who have just improved their game. And we've certainly seen that in the early parts of this season with Lamar, mm. you know, in terms of beating the Blitz. Nobody's done it better than him this season, which was kind of the, the, the lingering question from last year. You know, the Dolphins game happened, and then teams continued to blitz the Ravens' offense, and it just didn't adjust very well, and then Lamar was lost for the rest of the season, and that was kind of one, how well is he going to adjust to the Blitz and what defenses were doing? Yeah. Adjusted okay. Yeah. He's doing all right. You know, so it's just, it's just cool to see how those two guys have evolved together. I think it's a good point, and I think that it's easy to, like, in today's – era of football like a lot of these guys who are first round picks play right away like that or mm-hmm. or close to it um that's just kind of almost the expectation you know um i think josh allen played against the ravens in in the first game i want to say right didn't we start out and blew out the right. bills right and then uh he got late action in that game somebody else started like God, well, gosh. look, like regardless of, yeah. of going Sorry, back to go the ahead. the 2018 Bills Ravens game, but going again in yeah. my own head. But my, my point here is like a lot of these guys just play early, and that's the expectations that you play right away, <laughs> and then like then the then the the jury's decided immediately on like whether you're good or whether you're not. Right. And sometimes guys just get better, and I think that's been the case for both Lamar, and I think that's been the case for Josh Allen. Now Lamar was pretty darn good his first year as a starter, unanimous MVP, but he's continued like to just ascend. I think both these guys. So well, and it's interesting, especially when you compare him to the other quarterbacks in that class, right? Sam Darnold, Baker Mayfield, Josh Rosen, yeah, you know, other first round picks who were the polished guys, yeah, you know, who didn't work out for those guys and in, in, with those teams at least. So just. Just really fascinating. Yeah, the different career paths. Yeah, so uh, it's going to be a lot of fun on Sunday. Uh, hopefully, it stays dry. Uh, we will also want you guys to know, as I mentioned, you can email us every single week at the lounge at ravens.nfl.net. We're going to be giving away posters. Very cool. This poster, 
right here behind you, a version of this poster, not quite as big. This is a this is a large version of that poster, but we are going to yeah. be giving away uh, that poster to fans as they make their way. Um, you know, they're going to get that at the stadium, so uh, that'll be a giveaway for Sunday, which should be cool. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening, and we will talk with you. Oh, oh my gosh. What are you doing? You almost cut me off. I almost cut you off. I almost forgot. For the Bills game? <laughs> this is going to be the...